Okay, welcome back. Um, so we were talking about APIs. Um, somebody that could help summarize what we talked about API in one or two sentences. Peter? Right. That's a good. That's a good uh, way to look at it. It's sort of this place uh, where we uh, borrow information from from to display. Uh, in this case, like yes, this this information is borrowed. Like we didn't make it. But we can make our own. Pupil. Uh, stuff you can do with information you provide for them. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah, I think that's what you're describing will be the interface part, right? Like an API gives you sort of a ways in which you can retrieve data, um, what data you can retrieve, and then you use those ways, those mechanisms. In this case, like endpoints for URLs to retrieve that information. So yeah, those are uh, all good examples. So here we're like using, for instance, we're going to be using this dog API. And at some point in unit three, we're going to be making um, API. So, and at some point, I don't know if this is safe to do, but at some point, APIs and servers, uh, they will become sort of the same thing. Here we sort of want to draw a difference, but under the hood, like an API, like this is called the dog API, right? And this is just a server that somebody put online uh, for you to be able to retrieve information from this server. So a server could be, well, I guess a server can be an API, but not all APIs can be servers as well. Yeah, I think, I think that's safe to say, since uh, when we're talking about like a internet API or a web server API, we're talking about like retrieving information and, and or changing that information in a web server. Um, for instance, um, well, a website like Twitter, Twitter itself is a website that is in a server, right? But this Twitter doesn't, um, doesn't, of, doesn't allow us to retrieve this information um, through an API. Actually, I, I, may, I might be bombing that. Let's do Twitter. Not that API, just Twitter API. So it turns out that Twitter does have an API um, that you could do, you could, um, Twitter has an API that you can uh, send network requests to and you could post tweets uh, from, like you could write the, you could write a custom application um, where people can submit tweets and then you could post them on Twitter. Um, and that will be your application interfacing with the Twitter API. Uh, they t your application communicates with the Twitter API through uh, network requests, right, with, to a certain endpoint, and then that Twitter API actually posts your tweet. Um, I think, so Twitter is not a very good example. Like, like the New York Times. The New York Times is a website in a server, and that server that is hosting the New York Times is not an API. I don't, I don't think the New York Times has an API. If it has, then then we can say then times API. I guess now all of them have APIs. <laughs> the New York Times has an API. I'm trying to find a, a, an example where a website uh, doesn't offer an API. Um, not all websites offer an API for you to interact with. Um, shopping. I think like. Well, Amazon? No, Amazon probably had an API. And the, the purpose of APIs are for us to create applications 
that extend um, the uh, uh, what is already there or for uh, different use cases. The example with the Twitter, uh, it could be, imagine I could have a, what would be a good example? Let's say I, I, I could set up an application on my computer and I leave my computer in the lobby um, and anyone who comes to that computer, they, can, they cannot change tabs or anything like that. Uh, that computer will only display my app and my app has a text box where you can tweet uh, a random thing. And it just has the text box, it's not even Twitter itself. But my application will send that uh, to the Twitter API and the Twitter API will post the tweet. Um, I forgot where I was going with that example. Um, yeah, just not all websites have APIs. Um, developers, yes. So. Correct. Yeah, actually, I think I, I think I saw that there was a girl that was, or like her mom or her parents, like took their phone, her phone away, uh, so that she couldn't use any social media, and she found out that in the fridge, uh, she could use the fridge to tweet, uh, because the fridge has a nav, had a nav because now it's little smart. It's basically, that fridge has a computer inside. Um, there was an app that will allow her to tweet. So that's that app talking to the to her API. And then you can do stuff like that with almost anything. Um, Crestlist. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Crestlist doesn't have a. Say that again. Oh. Um, but you put like Crestlist API. Somebody asked, is there a developer's API for request list? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it seems that they have, yeah, as, as, you, as Tessa was saying, they might have a... <laughs> wait, what happened? Oh, wait. <laughs> I did? Sorry. Uh, Beja. Um, <laughs> the the Craigslist website only offers an API for you to do bulk posting, but you cannot you cannot get all the information. Um, you cannot get all the postings. Basically, uh, the only way to for you as a user to get all the postings is by actually going to Craigslist.com and then actually seeing them on the browser. There is no way for, let's say you let's say you want to build an application and you want to use Craigslist data and you don't want the website, you want all actually the raw data that constitute post. Um, Craigslist doesn't offer you that um, through an API. There are ways to get around that but that's a, a different topic. Um, Okay, so APIs are just everywhere. Um, they are how we are going to be building applications and have those applications talk to each other, which is, I think this is actually where um, software development gets really fun uh, because it's just connecting a bunch of different applications. And then you can, you know, you're only limited basically by your imagination as to what you can uh, make. Um, so, so we saw how we could use this endpoint. This is an API endpoint. Um, and a question that may uh, appear is, how can you tell, I think, I think this was actually Cameron's question, like how can you tell that this is an API endpoint versus a regular um, website endpoint? And the, the, the answer to that is you can't, by just looking at the URL, you cannot tell whether that is an API endpoint or a website URL endpoint, um, and by and if we if we if we look more carefully at the base, all endpoints will return to you information, right? It's just that that information will be either an HTML document that the browser can understand, or a JSON document 
which is uh, only JavaScript um, object notation, and there are other kinds. There are XML, um, YAML. There are different um, document formats in which data is transferred between uh, two computers. Uh, the most common that we see here every day in the web is HTML, HTML across the wire. The one that we're going to be dealing with most often with is JSON, JSON data. So, so just to just to finish the point, like you will, you cannot tell whether this has a website, this URL has a website or JSON data. The only way for you to tell is to actually make a request and see what you get back. If you get back HTML, then that probably means that it's a regular website. If you visit that URL with a browser, you will see the website. Um, if you try to visit that URL and you get something else that is not HTML, uh, then that probably means it's an API um, that you can use to retrieve data. Sorry? All it has, like, you know, you said it's XML, HTML, and JSON. So for all those three, you get to use them differently. So that's what you use, right? Yes, they, they, they are, they're all like um, means of uh, transferring data. That is like what they have all in common. They're just, it's a means to uh, transfer data, right? Um, and then HTML and JSON is just um, the structure that that data comes in um, is represented by the H whether it's HTML or JSON. And so like I could, I could show you here, um, JSON versus XML. These are two common these are two common uh, ways of transferring data. So look at this. For instance, here we have the same information. We have an object uh, with a key employees, and the value is an array where each element in the array is an object that has a first and a last name and represent one employee. And here we have three employees. So this is, the, this, is this data represented in the JSON format. Uh, this, this is the most common format that we're going to be using here. Uh, but that same data could be represented in XML format in this way. Uh, there's like an employees tag, and inside of that employees tag you have an employee tag. And inside you have a first name tag, in, in the middle goes the name, then close the first name tag, then open last name tag, uh, last name, and close last name. So this is just an example of the same data represented in two different formats. We could, as programmers, we could deal with any one of these two. Uh, we just need to, once we see the pattern, uh, we can start to interpret the data. And there's also um, modules that will help you um, convert, for instance, JSON to XML and vice versa. But to be honest, I have never had to deal with XML. Uh, most, all the stuff is just uh, JSON. It just so that you're aware that there are different ways to represent this data. So a, web, uh, a URL, an endpoint that gives me XML instead of HTML will be an, uh, an API because it's giving me just raw data that then I can interpret uh, and use in my applications. Um, so yeah, and then there are just multiple ways and um, I guess the only way in which, in which you can tell whether a URL is a regular website or an API endpoint is by actually making a request and seeing what you get back. Other questions or comments? So, so we saw this. Uh, we, we can use our browser. If we copy this uh, URL, um, we paste the URL in our browsers, we get the data back. And because we install this extension, this data looks nice. Um, it looks, we can collapse, uh, stuff like that. Now, so we saw that we could do, we could access API endpoints with the browser. We could also access them with curl. Um, curl is just like the command line um, program that allows to retrieve data. In this case, the browser will be a graphical user interface program uh, that allows to retrieve data. And then imagine if I actually have, um, for instance, for the to-do apps that, uh, that I'm working on, I have, <clears throat> I need to send like the data, 
right? I need to send the, the content of the to-do, whether that is uh, buying milk or doing grocery shopping. And that, it's, I cannot do it here. If I want to try that API from the browser, I cannot, I cannot do it easily. I can do it, but it, it's a lot of work. So for having like a, a sweet middle spot between a lot of control for um, the network request that we make um, and, and no control at all, which is basically the browser, one with full control will be crawl, one with not as much control will be the browser, uh, and that sweet spot that we have is a program called Postman. So I think some of you have already installed this uh, as you came in. Um, into the program. If you haven't, uh, please install it now. Just download the app. And it says, modern software is built on APIs. So this is, this is what is cool about Postman. Postman allows to design our APIs uh, that's not something that we're going to do a lot with Postman. What we're going to do with, with Postman is testing our APIs um, so that we see, once we start building APIs, we see that uh, the information that we're sending, we can um, assert whether the information that we're getting back is what we expect, uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Postman is there for faster and easier API development. Um, so once you have downloaded that and installed it, uh, you can open it. And here, actually, I'm going to do Is we, we can just do it with the regular. I'm going to close this. So once you get into Postman, you will see something like this. Just this, this window. And here, well, we're not going to like teach you where all the buttons are. You will have to do like a lot of exploration. Um, here, mainly, like this plus allows me to create a new request. Um, and then here I can put the URL. So I'm going to put here the URL from the dogs API. Close this. Just actually, just this one. Close this. Close that. Paste here. And then here I can just send uh, that network request. Um, and, and if I scroll down, I get the same data that we were looking at in the browser. Say that again. Uh, testing your APIs and yeah, just seeing if you're getting the data you expect. Mm -hmm. Like something that I've used it for is I create a web server, for instance, the web server for the to-do's app um, and then that server has, I, I don't know how many endpoints, but let's say 10 endpoints and I don't wanna, I make a change I want to make sure that nothing else broke. I could save all the requests here in Postman and repeat them all at once uh, so that I, I check whether something broke or not. That will be an example. Uh, and just because it allows to have more control of the data that we're sending. Yes, Joanne? Uh, once you're downloaded, Um, you, I think you will, let's just see what it is. You save that, uh, it's a zip file, so you'll need to unzip the file once you, uh, if you click on it. Uh, that probably puts a file on your downloads folder, or depending on where this is being saved. Uh, 
Oh, uh, yes, you could create a collection. You don't have to, though. You could, I think there is a cancel button. Um, I'm currently downloading Postman. Mm -hmm. Here. So I downloaded Postman here. Um, I want to show in Finder. So it put it in this folder. I'm going to move it to my desktop folder. Downloads. Uh, and it's here. Here I can just double click on it and it will uh, extract. And then that, what, what is extracted from this, I'm going to move into my applications folder. And that is my postman. Did you do this? Like, did you see it? And it, it opened up correctly. You're seeing the same thing here? Yeah. But I guess the last thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that this postman uh, is in your applications folder. Because otherwise, it won't be installed. It will be just in your downloads folder. Just make sure that in your applications folder, you have a postman. I think I have a postman here. Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah. Here it is. And that's, that's this postman. Just make sure that you have it in your applications folder. OK, so this is how we can then uh, send, send a network request with um, Postman. Let's look at a more, any questions on, on this. You can just put the URL here, and you hit send. And then at the bottom here, it shows you the response. Something that I like is like I can see the raw response which shows me um, just the raw data. And I can click on pretty um, to, for it to display well more beautifully. And then that is one good thing. Um, also, something that we're going to get into later on is you can see here that on the left side, I can pick uh, what is called a method. This is an HTTP method. So it turns out that. You can retrieve data, that will be with a get. You can post data, that will be like creating a new Twitch, adding a new to-do, that will be a post uh, request. So these are different request methods or different request canons. The right word is methods. Um, there are all of these. From here, the ones that we're going to see the most are like this top five. Post, po uh, put, patch, delete. If you want to delete something, then you send a delete uh, method request, etc. If you if you delete it by mistake, then it's gone. <laughs> well, you could if you're if you're building the API, let's say my to do's API. Something I could do if I send that delete request is I could ask for confirmation because I'm the developer, so I could ask. The client, do you really want to delete this? And then the next thing that they could say is uh, maybe a post request saying yes, something like that. So this one and the the dogs API is fun. I, I think I actually oh, this will be fun. Let's see. Uh, some of you have seen this website. Once we get to React Code Sandbox, once we get to React, we're going to be using this website. I think. I did something with the dog API uh, where I built like a small website that just fetches in information from dogs from the API and it displays you photos of that. Let's see if I can see it quickly, if I can find it still. My sandbox is, oh yeah, here it is. We're going to get to do this, which is very simple. Um, once we get to see React. So this is this is this simple website on the right that is using the dogs API to retrieve information from there. Um, and it has random. I get a new random dog every time. Or I could also select the breed, Chihuahua, and then I get a random Chihuahua dog. Like, 
right now you could do this with, uh, with just the JavaScript, the HTML, and the dumb stuff that you know. Uh, you could really just have two buttons and an image and then make the network request. Uh, actually, that's something that we haven't seen, like how to make that network request. That's what's coming, basically. Um, cool. So, and then all that code is just re uh, sending network requests to these URLs that we have uh, to retrieve those images. Um, so let's look at, so the dog API is a very simple one. Uh, we cannot specify any extra information that we want. Um, let's look at the one that, the first example that we saw, which was the iTunes API. This one that we were using with curl. And I copy this URL and I'm going to paste it on Postman. I paste that URL on Postman. And we can see a couple of things. Well, one, let's send this information. And we get back a 404 error. Message no route fan forget. Slash. Oh, I have two links. That makes sense. Thank you. Send that, and we get our data. This one, oh, the pretty couldn't understand that this was JSON. That's why it's not color. But I can select here what kind of pretty it is. I know it's JSON, so then we get this. So this is again just another way we we did this with um, with curl with the browser. Now we're doing it with Postman. We get the information here. Look at this here. That is uh, a nice feature of Postman, which is it sees that because the URL has this exclamation, uh, not exclamation, question mark. Um, in everything followed after the, the question mark is called a query parameter. And this is how we can say, this is how we can search basically. Like we can specify a parameter for searching for a string, in this case, Swift, or something that will contain Swift. Uh, and also it may contain over, and also it may contain coffee. Um, so this is a really cool thing of. Postman, which is, instead of me having to write those in the URL, I could type it here. Uh, I could type, and you can see how it's removing it from the URL as well. I could, uh, let's try podcast that I like, is Syntax FM. Um, oh, also, so note that I put in the, my term, so this, this URL endpoint that is to the iTunes API, to search has two uh, what are called query parameters. This is what they are called. And one is term, and that had like Swift over coffee, and another one is media. And in this case, that value is podcast. So I want to search for this other value, syntax FM, because I know that that's a podcast that I like. Um, and I want to see if it finds something. Uh, Note how before we had Swift plus uh, over plus coffee. Now I don't have that plus anymore. In between words, I have just one space. Let's see, this might break or this might work. So let's try it. send. And I got my data. I got some data back. Um, let's see if this is actually it. Oh, there is something called syntax error. <laughs> I don't think that's the podcast that I listened to. Let's look at this URL. Oh, this is another cool thing. That Postman, uh, similar to a browser, it lets you click on a link. Actually, you cannot do this. If you're looking at JSON in the browser, you cannot just click on the link and take you there. This is something that Postman can do. I clicked on this link uh, from the result that I got, and I, ha I have that this is the that image, syntax error. Anyway, this is not the podcast, the podcast that I listened to, but the, what I wanted to draw your attention to was uh, these query parameters here. Here, not only I'm sending information to, um, 
not only I'm retrieving information from this endpoint, but I am also providing information uh, to the endpoint to search for a specific term, in this case, syntax. Um, and I wonder, so I was expecting this to actually put the plus in. Let's see if, oh, also look at this here also. You remember how in curl we have to do curl dash capital U to get the headers? And here we get them all here. We not only get the body, but we also get the headers listed out here. And this is a little bit more easier to read than the curl uh, version, but we got the same information. For instance, uh, content type, text JavaScript. This is a real content type, but this, they just meant uh, JSON. Uh, what else? We see the date, um, and that's pretty much it. Also, we get here, oh, here, the status 400 OK. It also tells us how long it took to fulfill the request. Uh, it, it took 162 milliseconds. And it also tells us the size of the request. Uh, we can see that the body, the total size is 1.81 kilobytes. The body is 655 bytes. And the header is 1.17. This is not data that we're going to be looking at that much, but the status code, it is nice to have um, at once. Um, any questions, comments, ideas that we should try? So let's just work in the lab then. So the lab is um, very hands-on about like finding APIs and, and query them. You can find out if you go to the calendar um, for the day. I'm actually already here, but you just click here and on the day an API intro lab. This is the lab that we're going to be working on. Um, and this is use Postman to find each of the following HTTP codes. So similar to uh, the exercise that I asked you to do with curl, just find um, uh, endpoints that will give you this uh, HTTP code. Now you will do the same. Uh, find one of each using Postman. Um, uh, question about that. Yes. Any API, yeah. So you're free to just like um, HTTP APIs. Yeah, find, find, um, there is the dogs API, um, there is the I think there is a cat's API too. I should, they're, they're all mentioned here. So yeah, look at this. Uh, try to get those network requests. Um, the cat API, and I think, so yeah, find one request that will give you this uh, code. And then here, for each one, you'll want to write uh, the website that generated that HTTP uh, code. Also, for this, actually, it doesn't have to be, in this case, if we think about it, this request don't need to be API requests. They just need to be network requests, whether that is an API tool or a website that returns this code. It doesn't have to be a, an API. That means that you could try also putting URLs from websites. But you will have to make sure that the response uh, uh, code is one of these. Um, a description of what the status code means. I already shared on Slack uh, a resource that you can find what they mean. Um, oh, this this is a really good question. Like, if this is about like, speculating here, like if you if you were writing an app. 
and your app uh, received um, a 301, what would you do? Like, would you display something to the user? Uh, would you retry the request later? Um, yeah, well, what would you do? Like, would you repeat the request maybe in, in five minutes? Here, sort of speculate about if you're building an API, that API is making that error request and you're getting this error back. Uh, error or uh, success in this case. There is a reference here for the HTTP status codes as well. And then the part two, I think you could combine, you could combine sort of the two parts to like the part two could help you with part one. Uh, because the part two is APIs can be German. For each of the questions below, identify a website and search query that will give you the appropriate JSON. Paste the URL and a snippet of the JSON below. Googling the category plus API will generally take you where you need. So for instance, um, here, what they mean, actually somebody can interpret this for me. Like, what, what is that we want to do here? What is it that we're asking you to do? They want us to like pick a category like um, local search and then type it in plus API or API after that mm -hmm. and um, see where it takes us. So we find like some API supplement. Correct. So as as Cameron said, we want you to try to find an API that will uh, let you get JSON. Uh, about a random cat, um, a random cat fact. So we could generally do that if we do a random cat. Um, I'm just gonna paste it here. Random cat fact API. I'm gonna try to find if there's an API that will do this for me. Um, and then you just uh, look at the results. In this case, this seems that we have this one. Cat facts API. This API provides endpoints to get random cat facts. Uh, breed and facts, and then just explore this. Uh, see how you can get on status 200, successful operation. Nice. So, in this case, how would I replicate this with um, Postman? How could I use this? How could I use this API with Postman so that I get the same data that I'm this plane here. Oh, not actually, not that one. Here, try it out. And then I get this. I could, this is cool. It, they also uh, pre wrote a curl request if I wanted to try it with curl. Request URL and then the request body. Um, we get response headers as well. But here, what would I do if I want to try this with Postman? Alessandra? I put the, um, also note here that this one says, it's a get request. So in Postman, if you just create a new one, make sure that I have get here, paste the URL, and send. I get back the fact about the cat. <laughs> Say that again? Uh, and let's, let me see what, what we ask here. Um, I think, uh huh, yeah. Paste the URL and the snippet of the JSON below. Oh, actually, this below means, um, yes, we're adding in the README. So basically, you will be editing this README uh, with your um, responses to this. Uh, questions basically. So here, um, what I'll do is, and there are multiple ways, uh, what I will do is I will add a new line with underneath the one and paste the URL like at the top. Then after that, I will paste uh, the JSON that I got. And that's it. And then I will do, try to find um, the, the next one. 
questions before we get into doing this. You can work in pairs, you can work uh, by yourself. Um, make sure that if questions arise, ask them. Don't go home with them because at home we cannot help you. Um, yes? So we're not going to write a JavaScript file. We're, the answer to this question we're going to put in this readme. So you're going to clone, you're going to fork first this repo, then you clone it, and then you edit this, um, you edit this readme. In this case, um, I, I'm going to like edit it here, but you will not edit it this way. You will edit it with here. Imagine this is, um, I already forked it. Actually, let me just fork that. I, I'm forking this repo, which is something that you all have always done. And then I'm going to clone it uh, on my computer by taking this URL, going to my terminal. Uh, I'm going to fork it. Uh, I'm going to clone it just like right here on my home folder. Git clone. And then I paste the URL. Git clone, I paste the URL, then I hit enter. Uh, then this created a folder called Pursuit Core Introduction to Networking. Pursuit Core Introduction to Networking. And then here, if I do ls, I have only one file, a readme file. What I'm going to do next is just open this with my text editor code. And here, once I have, uh, here is uh, Alessandra to your question. Here's where I'm going to edit this um, readme to add my answer. So here, what I'll do is a random cat act. I would like to be a little bit organized, so I'm going to do, hmm, I'm going to do this. Three, um, Three backticks. This is just so that it looks nice. You don't have to do this, but it's, if you do it, uh, it will make um, it will look just better. Three backticks, and then followed by JS. And I'm going to say endpoint equal. And here is where I'm going to put the URL that matches this. Um, I think the URL we've got it here. Copy this, and then paste it here. Maybe I want to be nice and put quotes around it. Uh, and then maybe data. Data will be um, just going to copy this Java uh, JSON data and paste it here. So that will be for the first one. The same thing here, yes. For uh, I don't think we have, no, it's uh, just the website, the endpoint, a description of what the status code means. And um, if, if you were writing an app and you encountered this response status, what would you do as a developer of that app? So this could have, um, this could have like endpoint. Um, status meaning and then I don't know uh, what what would I do what would my app do so here you put the endpoint um, the URL that gave you that, the status of the meaning of that status, and what would my app do if my app received that status code? Would the endpoint be the JSON or the actual The endpoint will be the URL. That is this kind of URL. Okay, like the same thing. Uh-huh. The response. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it, note that for the first exercise, we're not asking you to put the response.
for the first point, it's only that one. Uh, and then if you do this, um, I think once we look here, it just looks nice like that. Endpoint. Um, this is once you push to GitHub, you will see it like this, uh, where it's a little bit more organized. Uh, endpoint and then the data. Any questions? Yes, Savita. Yes. Um, so you will you will explore the websites trying to get a two hundred um, re request um, status code. Once you find that, then you put the URL where you found that in here. I'm gonna do like HTTP uh, slash slash google.com. Then what is the meaning of the 200? It means, okay, good response. And what would my app do if they get a 200? Um, display the information was retrieved. Yes, you will want to find websites that will give you three or one. And uh -huh. yeah, for that you will need to like know what three or one means first. Um, I put in Slack a resource that has all of them. There's also uh, in Wikipedia, I think in a link on a README. Um, there is also a link to list of status codes. So yes, that's that's a really good point that Alessandro made, which is. You want to make sure that you know what the status code means so that you can attempt to get it uh, by using a URL. Mm -hmm. So, could you like, like any URL you could like the actual website, you don't have to get the Correct. Yes, for this first part, uh, this can be websites or APIs. Uh, no, it doesn't matter if it's the same as long as you get in the results. Also, note here that even though I put it in the in the markdown file, the one that ends in MD, I have set this in separate lines, but once I look at how it will look like, it doesn't, it, it puts all in the same line. Uh, I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do here for this, in, th in this case, instead of the Instead of the backticks, I'm just going to use stars. And then this is how you make lists on markdown files. So if I put stars at the beginning of the line, and I go here, and then I have this. That's just a, a small tip to make your um, list look a little bit better. Um, Cool. Any other questions before we get to work? Cool. Um, yes, you are. So, uh, two short announcements. So, on this point to web slash, uh, I shared the uh, Google Slack with you. Uh, so, you can go to that and check out the Google Slack and see the Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, for searching messages on Slack, you could do Command F. And then you could do from at jr. And I can get I'm gonna get all the messages that are six to from jr. Oh, wait, jr. I don't see the uh, sign up link. Oh, so maybe it's in this one. 
from Oh yeah, it's in here. This one. Douglas? Oh, uh, yes, you should do the exit ticket now. I always forget. Thank you for the reminder. For the first part, we need endpoint, status meaning, what it means. Um, or code meaning, I don't know, you could, and then what would my app do? Um, oh, something else is, we didn't get to cover this last part, the event loop. Um, I decided against it because it's not really related to APIs and then mixing stuff uh, might be more confusing. So if you find a point in the exit ticket that is uh, about a bad loop, um, you could just ignore it. Yeah, we're gonna get back to this later. Cool, so I think that's it uh, for the rest of the day, just working on, on getting used to uh, making API calls. Mm -hmm. Let me know if there's anything I can help with.